Hi fellow nurses! Here we are again to continue our lesson on hemodynamics. Alright, let's revisit cardiac output. What is cardiac output? Cardiac output is one important hemodynamic measurement which is the volume of blood ejected by the left ventricle each minute. Heart rate and stroke volume determine cardiac output. Of course, the heart rate is the number of heartbeats in one minute and the volume of blood ejected by the left ventricle during a heartbeat is the stroke volume, which is measured in milliliters. The equation for cardiac output is calculated by multiplying the heart rate and the stroke volume. Okay. Bear in mind that cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped by the left ventricle, not the total amount pumped by both ventricles. However, the amount of blood within the left and right ventricles is almost equal, approximately 70 to 75 uh, ml. Now, uh, let's enter into the left ventricle. There is a time when the left ventricle is fully relaxed. It occurs at the end of uh, filling or diastole, also called the end diastolic point, and the volume of blood within the left ventricle is called end diastolic volume, and it's about 120 ml. Then the left ventricle contracts, forcing blood through the aorta and into the whole arterial system. After that is another moment when the left ventricle is fully contracted. It occurs at the end of contraction or systole, also called the end systolic point. And the volume of blood within the left ventricle is called end systolic volume, and it's about 50 milliliters. The difference between end diastolic volume and end systolic volume is your stroke volume. Therefore, end diastolic volume minus end systolic volume gives us the stroke volume which is the volume of blood that the left ventricle ejects with every heartbeat or stroke. In this case, the stroke volume is 120 ml minus 50 ml, which is equals to 70 ml. Giving this stroke volume and a normal heart rate of 70 beats per minute gives you the cardiac output of 4.9 per minute. Usually, the normal value of cardiac output is from 4 to 8 liter per minute. From this, it logically follows that this parameter has no clinical utility unless it is somehow related to the patient's body size. An average 5 liter per minute cardiac output would be vastly excessive for a person of small stature and vastly inadequate for a humongous bodybuilt person. For this purpose, Cardiac output is usually described in terms of cardiac index, which is by convention is gross cardiac output in liters of blood per minute divided by, by the surface area of the body or the body surface area. Cardiac index is a hemodynamic parameter that relates the cardiac output from the left ventricle in one minute to the body surface area, thus relating heart performance to the size of the individual. The unit of measurement is liters per minute per square meter. The heart being a pump, which functions in a pulsatile fashion, it is possible to describe the cardiac output in terms of stroke volume and heart rate. However, beyond this, stroke volume has several determinants, which are cardiac contractility, preload, and afterload. But cardiac output also determines preload and afterload and preload determines contractility. So all of these elements are interconnected and it is impossible to separate them into a perfect clockwork model of the cardiac output. Most textbooks will therefore list all of these variables together. Okay, let's talk about heart rate as a determinant of cardiac output. Though the equation cardiac output equals stroke volume times heart rate seems logical, in fact, the use of heart rate as a straight multiplier here is a bit facile, as it actually also factors into the stroke volume. Consider that the heart rate determines the diastolic filling time, which in turn determines the stroke volume by the Frank-Starling mechanism. 
According to Frank Starling mechanism, when the blood volume in the ventricles increases, cardiac muscle fibers stretch and then contract. The amount of blood in the ventricles, the amount of stretching, and the force of contraction are directly proportional. An increase in blood volume results in a greater fiber stretching and then a more powerful contraction. This relationship is referred to as the Frank Starling law. Analogy to this uh, law is that the action of cardiac muscle fibers is analogous to that of a rubber band. Stretching a rubber band longer results in a more forceful snap when it is released. Given that, at special rapid heart rates, the stolic feeling might actually be insufficient and the cardiac output might drop. Alright? Okay, let's end our lesson there. And in my next video or next videos, I will explain further the correlation between heart rates, stroke volume, and cardiac output. Alright, I hope you have now a clearer understanding of the cardiac output. Thank you.